Here we go. Uh, assignment 3E. This is a uh, topic that is pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, this is uh, introducing us to a guy by the name of Shebyshev. Shebyshev. It's written right there in example B. Shebyshev um, and the Shebyshev's theorem. Okay, so uh, it, it's, it's a pretty good introductory theorem to kind of get us where we're going to be going here in the next couple chapters. Anyways, I digress. Uh, we should know how to do part A. That's just the coefficient of variation. And then we will be introduced to Shebyshev. Uh, so here we go. Let's, let's get this ball rolling. Uh, a sample of uh, runners was taken about the number of miles they run in an average week. They produced the results that had a sample mean. So again, X bar is the average. So the average runner, X bar, the average is 18.4 miles for these runners with a sample standard deviation of 4.1 miles. So that obviously indicates that not all of them ran 18.4 and 4.1, you see that there is actually a spread of data there a little bit. Um, so the numbers are spread out. That's what the standard deviation says. It's like how far are the numbers away from each other? All right. So compute the coefficient of variation. So if you recall, you should have it written on your formula sheet. The coefficient of variation is S divided by X bar times 100. So in this particular situation, S is 4.1, X bar is 18.4, and then times 100. And so this is going to be 4.1 divided by 18.4 uh, times 100. Two eight two six. All right, so that is the real indication of how the spread of the numbers, and so they're, they're kind of far away from each other. Again, the bigger that number is, the coefficient of variation indicates that the numbers are really far away from either, even themselves, and the smaller that it is, that means that they're actually pretty close to the average. Okay, Chevy Chef. Let, let's talk about Chevy Chef. So this is kind of an indicator of, okay, it's going to be, think of this as all of the runners, this, this bell-shaped curve, okay, all of the runners. And right now we know that the average is 18.4. Now, some runners obviously run more than 18.4. Some runners obviously run less than 18.4. That's the way averages work. All right, so but on average, it's 18.4. Okay, along comes this guy by the name of Chevy Chef. So I know that the average in this situation is 18.4 and a standard deviation is uh, 4.1. Along comes this guy named Chevy Chef and says, this. If you go to this average and you go up two standard deviations and down two standard deviations, okay, so I go up two standard deviation, two standard deviations, and down two standard deviations, what Chevy Chev says is that the area, the percentage of runners that are in between these two numbers will be at least 75% of the runners. 75% of the runners, at least 75% of the runners will be between those two marks. Okay, I can give you another example here in just a moment. And then he continues. What happens if you go up three standard deviations and down three standard deviations? So plus and minus 
uh, three standard deviations. Well, he says that that is going to be at least, again, important word there, at least 88.9% of the data. And then last but not least, we go way out to four standard deviations. And so four standard deviations up, four standard deviations down. So plus and minus four standard deviations. He says that that will be at least 93.8%. At least. It won't be smaller than that. It's going to be at least 93.8. All right. So again, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense a lot of times when you're talking about people running miles and things like that. So again, let me kind of crib sheet what Chevy Chev said. Is if you take the average and go up and down two standard deviations, you're going he guarantees 75%. If you take the average and go up and down three standard deviations, Chevy Chev guarantees 88.9%. Uh, and then if you take the average and go up and down four standard deviations, guarantees 93.8%. This is something that you want to write down on that formula sheet that you have probably some of the other formulas written on. This is something that you have to know, and you probably want this as a quick reference, unless you're going to memorize this. I, you probably want to write it down. So another example that you could kind of think of is this. Um, how, how tall are students at Independence High School or, or in my class or whatever? Let's say Independence High School. Let's say the average height of a student at Independence High School is five foot, um, let's go five foot five. Five foot five. Now, obviously, not everybody is five foot five. Um, so let's say that there is a standard deviation of two inches. All right. So if I kind of put this out on a number line here, we have five foot five. And then taking standard deviations on top of that, that would be five foot seven, five foot nine, five foot eleven and then six foot one. Taking standard deviations off of this, this would be five foot three, five foot one, and then four foot left. Okay, so this is average, and this is one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, four standard deviations, idea. Uh, this is one, this is two, this is three. Let me go four, actually, four standard deviations. Uh, that would be what four foot nine. So these are students at Independence High School. What Chevy Chef says is this: if this data is true, he can guarantee that seventy-five percent of the students, at least seventy-five percent of the students, are between five foot one and five foot nine at least 75% of Independence's population, which is a very true, at least 75%, right? Yeah, but there are tall people and things like that. So there are, you know, people that are six foot three and things like that. They, they, do, they do exist around here. Um, so that's fine. So he extends his theorem and says, that if I go three up to three down, that would be at least 88.9% of the general population. And then one more, if you go four, stand, four standard deviations up and down, he said that that is at least 93.8%. So that's Chevy Chevy. Okay, anywho, I digress. On to this question. Use Chevy Chef's theorem to find the smallest interval centered on the mean at which we can ensure 75% of the mileage totals will fall. All right, so we have our average and our standard deviation, and they mentioned 75%. 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the average plus and minus two standard deviations that is going to get us this 75%. So I take my average and I subtract two standard deviations. So I subtract two. That puts me down to 10.2. I do the same process. I go 18.4 and I add two standard deviations. Take a look at my calculator and see how I'm doing that. And I write it in interval notation. So anywhere between uh, 10.2 miles and 26.6 miles will ensure 75% of these runners will run. Okay, backside, same questions, just different numbers. Uh, so first and foremost, compute the coefficient of variation. So that's S divided by X bar times 100. So in that, this situation, that's 1.33 divided by 7.87 times 100. says use Chevy Chef's theorem to find the smallest interval centered around the mean uh, in which we can ensure 88.9%. So look at what is what is 88.9% and we should see that plus and minus three standard deviations is the 88.9. Okay, that's three standard deviations up and down. So that's what I have to do. I have to take my average uh, and add and subtract three standard deviations. So that would be 7.87 minus three, 1.33s. So the minus puts me to the low side, and the high side would be the 787 plus three standard deviations. So that is my interval, everywhere between 3.88 and 11.86. That's Shen Shen.